In May 2020, the world's largest microchip producer, Taiwan's TSMC, announced plans to build a U.S. chip facility in Arizona. It was a huge win for then-President Donald Trump, who promised his voters he was bringing back factory jobs lost to China over the past decade, and TSMC was fully committed. They pledged $12 billion to construct the facility, and even Apple got behind the project, pledging to eventually use the Arizona-produced microchips in older-generation iPhones. The U.S. was winning big, and at an important time, too. Tensions were rising between the U.S. and China, and China's government most definitely wasn't happy to see Taiwan's flagship company pour billions of dollars into the U.S. economy. Everything looked like a lock for the United States. But fast forward to August 2023, and things have drastically changed. Labor shortages, extravagant construction costs, and huge culture clashes between American and Taiwanese workers are now threatening the entire future of the Arizona factory. In today's video, I'm going to break down the five biggest problems that will ultimately determine if TSMC's Arizona investment will be a success or a complete failure. But make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video, because the fifth and final reason is something that I guarantee almost no one inside the United States saw coming, but it's so huge and revealing, it could ultimately change the entire future of the microchip industry as we know it. Problem number one, construction cost in the United States. TSMC has now pledged $40 billion towards the construction of two fabs in Arizona, but executives are learning a hard lesson that building in the United States is significantly more expensive than Taiwan. Labor costs, permits, regulatory compliance, and rising inflation have skyrocketed costs in recent years. And to give you some perspective on just how much more expensive costs are inside the United States, let's look at a comparable company. Calvin Su is the president of Changchun, Arizona, a chemical supplier that invested in its own $300 million factory in Arizona. He recently stated that U.S. construction costs are 10 times the cost of Taiwan. These extraordinary costs are even causing some to question the entire legitimacy of TSMC's project in Arizona. Kirk Yang, chairman of Kirkland Capital and a former tech analyst stated, TSMC's investment in the U.S from a business perspective, makes no sense at all. So far, the Phoenix project has yielded very little benefit for TSMC or Taiwan. Yang is one of the many tech insiders who believe TSMC might have been forced to set up a factory in the United States because of political considerations, which leads us directly to problem number two, US-China tensions over Taiwan. The biggest question surrounding US-China relations today is this, will China invade Taiwan? TSMC plays directly into the answer to this question as the semiconductor company has long been considered Taiwan's silicon shield and a major deterrent to China invading the island. 90% of the world's most advanced microchips, in fact, come from factories in Taiwan. And this is a point I've made multiple times in previous videos. China cannot afford and would never strike first against Taiwan. The reasoning behind this is quite simple. China can't risk damaging these important tech factories as it would be a major own goal and compromise the very technology China needs to grow its own economy. But many US politicians are adding fuel to the fire with their inflammatory comments designed to provoke Beijing. Many US politicians are now advocating for the US government to abandon the one China policy that has guided the United States and China relationship for well over 50 years. Many politicians also want to move Taiwan closer to formal independence. Comments like these are not only reckless, but goes against the very will of Taiwanese people. Less than 2% of Taiwanese want formal independence from China. But consider the recent comments from U.S. Congressman Seth Moulton, who stated if China were getting close to invading Taiwan, he would support U.S. aircraft bombing TSMC factories in Taiwan just to make sure that China doesn't gain control. When you hear comments like this from U.S. politicians, it's hard not to imagine that political pressure from the U.S. didn't play a role in forcing TSMC to build this factory in the United States, which leads us to problem number three, poor working conditions. Last month, TSMC officially announced the Arizona factory will be pushed back from 2024 to 2025. And when you start to do some research into what's actually happening on the ground in Arizona, it's absolutely shocking the conditions of this construction site. In a new report released from Prospect last month, TSMC's Arizona plant safety is being questioned after multiple accidents, with one of the union reps going on record stating, it's easily the most unsafe site I've ever walked on. 
There have been multiple accidents involving loads being dropped from cranes, at least two cases in which workers have fallen through badly marked scaffolding, and another worker fell through flooring to a level below a more than 30-foot drop. One union member says that TMC tried to cover up a dangerous gas leak by telling workers there was an active shooting drill. When workers later found out that the active shooting drill was fake news, and instead there was a major gas leak, American workers were outraged. Trust is becoming a major issue between American workers and their Taiwanese counterparts, which leads us to problem number four, culture differences. One of the biggest challenges remaining is how TSMC plans to blend American and Taiwanese workers together in a new operation inside the United States. As you can imagine, Working as an engineer for TSMC is a highly valued and deeply respected job in Taiwan. Taiwanese engineers are used to working long hours and weekend shifts and sacrificing their time and livelihood for the benefit of the company. Working as a TSMC engineer is such a valued job in Taiwan that engineers joke they sell their liver to obtain employment with Taiwan's largest and most important company. This, of course, is a stark culture difference from American employees who value their time off and work considerably less hours than their Asian counterparts. Wayne Chu, an engineer who left TSMC last year, said he thought about joining the company's overseas expansion but lost interest after realizing he would have to pick up the slack of his American colleagues. He stated, The most difficult thing about wafer manufacturing is not technology. The most difficult thing is personal management. Americans are the worst at this because Americans are the most difficult to manage. It's a revealing insight because it mirrors the exact sentiment that Morris Chang, the founder of TSMC, has stated multiple times over the years. Mr. Chang has questioned the US effort to reshape the global semiconductor supply chain. In Mr. Chang's mind, Taiwan will always have the upper hand in microchip manufacturing and TSMC's success cannot be replicated inside the United States. Of course, Joe Biden is trying to prove Mr. Chang wrong by passing the $52 billion Chips Act to bolster the American microchip industry. But honestly, it doesn't matter how much money the US government throws at the microchip industry, because like I mentioned at the start of this video, the fifth and final problem is truly shocking and threatens the entire future of the US microchip industry. Problem number five, lack of skilled workers inside America. While the US government has the ability to print an endless number of dollars and give out generous subsidies like the $52 billion CHIPS Act, there is one thing it seems money can't buy in the United States, and that is skilled American workers. A new report from Bloomberg opens with a bleak outlook for the industry. US chip makers are struggling to fill key positions as a shortage of skilled labor threatens to hobble efforts to revive the domestic industry. One of the key selling points of TSMC's Arizona factory has always been bringing back factory jobs to American citizens, but there are simply not enough qualified Americans to do the job, and this is where things get very interesting. With the construction delays and ongoing problems, TSMC decided to bring in 500 Taiwanese engineers, all of whom have experience setting up similar plants in Taiwan. To be honest, it makes sense, right? If there aren't enough qualified Americans to do the job, the only viable solution is to import skilled workers from abroad. But this plan has completely backfired. Almost immediately, US trade unions like the Arizona Pipe Trades 469 Union started a petition to block the issuing of work visas for these 500 Taiwanese engineers. American workers are growing angry with TSMC and other websites like protectazworkers.org have been launched to raise awareness and stand up for American workers. Interesting enough, the problem goes both ways, as even the Taiwanese are becoming fed up with their American counterparts. A popular Taiwanese YouTube channel with almost 3 million subscribers posted this video online last week, accusing American workers of being lazy and incapable of building the plant. To be honest, this entire situation is one giant mess, but the core issue from this entire ordeal is that while it's great to welcome foreign direct investment and create jobs for American citizens, we can never forget the United States is a nation of immigrants, and the only reason the US became a strong country was because it welcomed the brightest minds from around the world into the United States. Sadly, this doesn't seem to be happening anymore. A new report from Chemistry World released earlier this month shows the shocking truth. Scientists of Chinese descent are leaving the US at an accelerating pace, with more than 20,000 scientists of Chinese descent who began their careers in the United States have left for other countries, including China, between 2010 
in 2021. Everyone, I can go much deeper into this report about why Chinese scientists are leaving the United States, but I'll save that for a future video. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into Arizona's TSMC factory, and it's time that you let me know what you think of this factory in the comments down below. Finally, if you're a long-term viewer of this channel or new here, I wanna share with you a new platform I recently launched that provides you a better way to connect with me and other fans of our YouTube channel. I recently launched a Locals page, which essentially is a platform that gives you more access to me. I'm gonna be updating my Locals page with exclusive content, behind the scenes footage, and it will also be a place where all the fans of the channel can interact and share information with myself and other members of our community. The best part is that you can join our new community on Locals as a free user to get started. And if you'd like to support the channel, there is also an option to upgrade and become a premium supporter and gain extra perks. I'll drop the link down in the description below and also the pinned comment. So please head over to my Locals page today and come join our community. I can't wait to see you on the inside. As always, thank you all for your amazing support and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.